Dino Jet. I don't see a sticker though. Well, it was on sale, so maybe no sticker. So, uh, so this is specifically specifically for the GSX S750. And, uh, let's open it up. Now, Fuel Mode is kind of cool because they'll support your programming needs. So you send them a description of what you've done to your bike, and then they send you a program. Oh, stickers! Not from Fuel Moto. They missed out. But Power Commander, Dino Jet. <laughs> All right, so first step before we do anything is going to the Power Commander website and downloading the software. Downloads. Access Power 5, Power Commander 5, download software, Power Commander B software, 5 software, download. 11.4 megabytes, so it's not very big, but my internet connection is not very fast. I live in the woods, all right? Install. Install Power Commander. Do it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Next, next. Next. Go. Okay. All right, so here's our software. Here's our maps. In order to send a map to the power community, you first connect the thing. This little guy goes in this little port. Can you see that? Little rubber doodad on the side. You open it, plug it in. Ooh, we got lights. We got lights. Let's see if I can prop this up a little bit. Okay, we're plugged in. Now what? Send map to the open map file into the connected PCB device. So send map. Ah, oh, look at that. Ooh, this goes full screen on this thing. Percent throttle, yep. 2%, 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way up. So look at these very specific percent changes. And these RPM ranges. Wow, even drop minus one. This is a very uh, detailed, <laughs> learned map. I'm glad I went through Fuel Moto. Hopefully this works well. I'm excited to see what uh, happens. All right, so we got this loaded. We're gonna hit send map. It says map sent successfully at the very bottom. Map sent successfully. Is that it? Are we done? The only way to lose the map is to download another map to the unit. So it's written. Okay, I don't see anything else in here I need to deal with at all. I'm done unplugging. All right. Let's get down to business. Uh, all we need to do now is install this thing. And uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. The nice thing is they actually give you instructions specific specific to your bike. Step uno, remove the main seat and the passenger seat or solo cover. You got it. I am really geeked about this. And then prop the tank up. So remove the seat, prop the tank up using the prop in the tail section. They missed a little bit. I mean, it's not just that, you don't just prop it up work involved. My handy super long socket Allen's fiber. Let 
lift and separate. All right, so we need two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, remove the plate, set that aside, and now we lift the tank. We need a special tool. Can you see this? This this is a pegboard, a long one that I got at um, Home Depot, like a dollar ninety nine, and I put it in the vise and I snapped this little piece off. They're just tack welded on, or soldered on. Uh, bent this slightly straighter, and you can see it's just one of these, but it works perfectly here and here. All right, the gas tank's propped up. Lay the PCV in the tail section. Power Commander 5 is the PCV. So we'll just guide this in here. All this going up here. And this, whoa, how'd that happen? This goes here. That's a ground wire. Okay. Secure the ground wire from the PCV with small ring lug to the negative terminal of the bike's battery. Done. Unplug the stock wiring harness from each of the fuel injectors. All right, we're not gonna worry about the PCV right now, but we are gonna disconnect our fuel injectors. Number one. Number two, do you see these wires right here? Hopefully you can see that clearly. Second one. Hard to get my finger on it. There we go. Number three, of course, is blocked by what appears to be a fuel line. Do I need to remove that? Perhaps. Ah, it came off. Here we go. Number four is off. Plug the connectors from the PCV wiring harness in line of the lower fuel injectors and the stack wiring harness. PCV orange colored wires go to cylinder one. So this is obviously orange, right? Cylinder one. Cylinder two. They're such fine wires, I wanna be careful not to yank on them too hard. But I mean, not that it isn't well built. Cylinder three. So I should be on green. There we go. And number four. I'm gonna feed it over there and grab it. Number four is blue. Do you see the little nub on the top? Make sure you align that with the clip here. If you can see, that little nub slides into there nice firm click and it's got a great rubber seal obviously it's weatherproof now that I got those done next step is going to be to plug these into the actual injector that's pretty fantastic my clip is on the bottom look at that effortless almost like it was made for it like they knew what they were doing click there you are. Click. So the second piece clicks and plugs into the fuel injector that we disconnected. So we complete the circuit. Complete the loop. There we go. Now on the very end of this line, let's pull this back a little bit, are plugs that go in here on this throttle position sensor. Carefully, and peel this back. See that? So this wire is unplugged. This one takes its place. They're exactly the same. Not the 
easiest place to reach. And it just got stuck under something. Okay, let's try it again. Awkward. Click, click. That's a good sound. So now we got this sad little guy. <laughs> we connect it. Everything gets looped through. Disconnect, connect, disconnect, connect. And it's just a loop through. How ingenious is this? I think it's all plugged in. Other than the O2 sensor. Locate where the stock O2 sensor connects to the main wire harness. This is a black four pin connector located under the fuel tank, figure F. There we go. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna reach in and plug this in. That's it. This gets zip tied. So now I just tuck and clean up and start it. All right, first I'm gonna zip tie the uh, O2 sensor line. Just tuck it back in here real nice like. And trim. I like to use as few zip ties as possible. You never wanna pull with any force on your wires. You could easily disconnect them, especially if it's under force for a an amount of time. It'll just slowly yank things out. So I'm gonna zip tie this here. I believe that's a good place for it. It curves down. It's out of the way. It's not hitting anything. It's tucked up nice and clean too. Alright, so that allows this to come in here. All right, this is the mounting spot. This is where the man says it should go. Insert in the tail section. Use the supply Velcro to secure the unit in the tail. All right, I'm gonna attach it to the bag because I, you know, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I'm just gonna attach it to my toolbox. Because I don't know where else it's supposed to go. Which is fine, as long as it sticks. <laughs> I'm going to try one more Velcro piece. Alright, hey, there were two more. There was a little baggie to seal up the unused ports. Let's make sure we got that. Shall we? Because you do get a little water back here. And uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to zip tie right there. I actually Velcroed it to the tool bag. That's kind of funny, unexpected, but maybe it makes sense. It is just Velcro, not permanent. All right, just re-angled the ground line a little bit so I have more room. And a little more cord. Just one more to give it a little more security. I don't want to get it caught up over here where I put the seat in and out. Talk. You know, really, uh, after you've done one of these, if other bikes are pretty similar, this is like a 20, 30 minute job. This is really easy. We're just gonna start it. That's a good sign. And uh, it's just that idle circuit. And as you know, the idle isn't any different. It's not reprogrammed, it's just zero. It's the same fuel at idle, so it shouldn't sound or be any different at idle. So the good news is here, there's no errors and it started. Okay, let's change that around. It started and there's no errors. So that's it. We're done with the install. Um, now it's just a matter of getting out and taking it for a ride. Um, I'm really looking forward to smoother ride and worse gas mileage. And uh, if worse gas mileage is an indicator that it's working, 
um, I'll be really happy. And worst gas mileage should be an indicator that it's working really well. Um, I'm at 57.7 miles per gallon, no matter how much I beat on it. I can't kill the gas mileage, so it's definitely running way too lean. I should be in the 42, uh, maybe at best 45 mile per gallon range. Um, so looking forward to a little performance enhancement, smoother operation at all RPMs, and uh, definitely worse gas mileage. So if you're considering installing the Power Commander 5, uh, I hope this video helps you uh, accelerate your learning on the install process. And uh, uh, be safe out there, happy riding, and uh, I'll see you in the next video when I do a test ride. See ya.